All right, looks like we're slowing down. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Today we're talking about the end of year reporting for the Maine Department of Education um, attendance, daily attendance, truancy, bullying, and behavior. Um, everyone here in this call does have um, microphone as well as camera. Um, if you do not want your camera to be part of the recording, please make sure that you turn your camera off because uh, it will show up on the recording if your camera is on. A couple people coming in still. So once again, please make sure that your microphone remains muted. Um, at the end of this, we will have an opportunity for questions um, and then you can come off mute and ask your questions. We also have the chat up in the top right corner. You are welcome to use that to ask your questions as we go. We will get to them um, at the end as well. Uh, we are covering four reports today. So um, please feel free to ask questions along the way. I'll try to take a moment um, after each one to ask any questions. Um, and so with that, we will go ahead and get started. All right. Let's see here. So upcoming reports that we have, we have main schools that's been open um, since the 15th. Uh, that is due on the 30th of July. Please make sure that is in so we can get everybody set up in Synergy and NEO. Um, superintendents will get any notices if you want to wait until your superintendent is um, changed over. If you're getting a new superintendent this year, uh, that is um, fine. You can wait until the 1st of July to get that going. We also have the ESEA demographics report that is currently in a review stage. Um, so you are welcome to um, go ahead and look in it, look at it, get some uh, preemptive work done, but you will not be able to have it certified until after Monday, which is Memorial Day, the 27th. So uh, the certification period will open next week. End of your reporting, uh, we will be uh, going over all of the dates for that in today's webinar. Uh, exiting all of your students from Synergy, please make sure that you have that done by the 30th of um, June so that we can get everybody rolled over in time for the new school year. Um, we will have a webinar for that next Tuesday about how to exit your students from State Synergy. So please join us for that if you're not sure how to do that. Then we have the special education exit report that um, we'll have a webinar on the following Tuesday, and that will also be due on the 30th of July. So those are upcoming reports for now. Um, we also have, we have a newsletter, make sure you sign up for our newsletter. Um, if you want any more information about these, uh, that will be going out around the first of the month. So please feel free to sign up for that on our website. All right. Let's see here. All right. All right. On to our end of year reports. So all of the resources that you will need can be found on the help desk website. On the data reporting instructions tile, you will find how to report. Uh, that will be in NEO, uh, the reports that are in there. And then the student enrollment guides will be when and what to report. So that will be your um, guides for what counts as excused absence, unexcused absence, behavior, things like that. Data reporting instructions will take you to the daily attendance certification report instructions, as well as the behavior certification report instructions. So how to get to those, how to certify, all of that information is on the data reporting instructions page. The guidance for what to report, student enrollment guides, that is on the um, that's a really great resource. This is all of the information that will be there. You'll have attendance reporting guidance, behavior reporting guidance, and then at the very bottom will be truancy. Um, so you have all of that information there if you need any assistance. Um, those are available. We're covering four reports today. We will cover them in this order. Uh, bullying is a NEO only report. The NEO, uh, it is a NEO module all unto itself. Um, and then there is a behavior report, uh, da daily attendance report and a truancy report. The behavior, daily attendance and truancy all get uploaded into Synergy and then go through their automatic ETL to NEO uh, for certification. So just be aware that those they are slightly different in how they are reported. All 
all LEAs with publicly funded students are required to report on all of these reports. And these are the dates to keep in mind um, as we come up on the end of the school year. Quarter four covers April through June. These certifications do cover the entire school year. So if you have any information that needs to go back to quarter one, quarter two, or quarter three, you are welcome to do any updates to that data. Um, if you've heard new information since they were validated um, in the previous quarters. So this is a final, everything needs to be reported and certified um, finishing up the reports. Data is due for bullying on 6.30. Behavior is due on 6.30. Daily attendance and truancy are both due on 7.15. So please make sure that everything is in by those dates. All right, we will go on to the bullying report. If you have not seen this visual, this visual is incredibly helpful for determining when a bullying incident gets reported into Synergy and or NEO. Um, so as you can see here, this is a flowchart. Um, if you have an incident of suspension um, and across the top here, if the incident was a bullying or uh, was not a bullying or cyberbullying incident, it does not get reported in bullying um, if, or or in um, synergy. So this is a no for the suspension, no for bullying. If this incident was bullying, but the student was not suspended, uh, then it would be reported only in the bullying reporting system in NEO. However, if you have a suspension, yes, and you have an incident of, and it was an incident of bullying, it gets reported in both synergy and in the bullying reporting system. This is a really helpful flowchart. This is available right on the student enrollment guidance. Print it out. It's a really great resource. I know a lot of um, principals who have it posted for any information that they need to reference throughout the year. So this can be a really helpful um, resource. Bullying reporting report is in the bullying reporting system. In NEO, you will need access to the bullying reporting system. If you do not have access to that module, you will need to make sure that you have your superintendent submit an access request on your behalf, and that will be processed by the help desk. Um, if you do not have an active staff assignment in NEO staff, you're gonna hear me say this a lot today. Um, if you do not have an active staff assignment in NEO staff, you will need to um, have your a staff data specialist enter you into NEO staff in order for that process, uh, that request to be processed. Um, so we will not be able to process that until that's all done. End of the year, probably most of us do have access. If you don't, we can always get that taken care of. So navigation in NEO, bullying reporting system up here at the top, we select into that. It's gonna go through all of the uh, quarterly reporting due dates, all of the statute language, all of the guidance for what to report here. As you scroll down, further guidance, definitions of bullying. Um, and then we will continue all the way to the bottom where you have your um, click here to submit and, bear, uh, and review certify substantiated incidents of bullying. Once you click that here button, it will take you into this module where you will have any SAU that you have access to and you can select school summary. If you need to create a new incident, you have that option here as well. Um, if incidents need to be added, uh, that can be done here. But school summary is where that report will be validated and reviewed. Once you click on to that summary report, you have all of the schools listed and you have the number of incidents for each school and the total for your SAU. Once you have verified it, your superintendent can come in and click that review button. That is essentially our bullying report. If there are any questions about that, I'll pause for just a quick minute. You can use that chat function up in the top right corner to go ahead and um, ask any questions you might have. Right. We will go ahead and continue moving forward. Behavior report. 
Once again, the behavior report is um, started in uh, your local system, your local student information system, and then gets uploaded into State Synergy and then into NEO before it gets certified. So you will need to uh, make sure that everything is, oh, sorry, hold on just a second. Um, you'll need to make sure that everything is in State Synergy. If you're not seeing something for a behavior incident in NEO, it has to go back to State Synergy in order to be um, uploaded into that NEO report. If you have anything that's incorrect on a NEO report, it has to go back, any updates and editing needs to happen in State Synergy. Once again, this visual here um, for incidents of bullying um, and uh, suspensions, if a student is suspended, that is when we get it reported into the uh, Synergy system. So incidents of bullying get reported as other um, if the student is suspended and it gets reported in the bullying reporting system. Uh, so there's two reports that that needs to be done for bullying incidents that um, end up in a suspension or a change uh, to alternative setting for at least half of the school day. Uh, there are also other incidents that do get entered into synergy, such as these. Uh, those would be reported here um, for any student who has a behavior incident. Locating this report is also in NEO. You will need to have access to student data in order to get into this report. The um, student module is granted to anyone as long as they have a active staff assignment. Uh, so please have your superintendent submit a NEO access request form if you do not have access to the student data section of NEO um, if, um, in your NEO login. So once you're in NEO, we're going to go to student data, student reports, and then it will be the bullying, or sorry, it will be the behavior certification report. So we're in NEO, student data, student reports, and then alphabetical order for enrollment reporting, behavior certification report, and behavior details report. The behavior certification report is your aggregate count. That is what gets certified by your superintendent. The details report will go into detail about the students that are making up the counts in the certification report. So once we are in the certification report, you'll have these, um, these reports here. Uh, you'll have the numbers aggregated along the way. Um, and so, we have one um, alcohol related, one in school suspension. It will just go through the summary. Once everything is all set, um, you can go in and review everybody, and then your superintendent can go in, review, and submit to DOE. Okay. Once you're in your review details, you will see the individual students who make up the, um, the aggregate counts here, what the incident types were, the dates of the incidents, what grade level, student IDs, uh, resolution for the incident, and the duration. So you'll have all of this information here so that you can uh, verify that the counts are accurate for all of the information on the certification report. You can search this, export it so you can sort it, uh, and you can do some column sorting along the way here as well. And that's the behavior report. Any questions? So just to summarize, um, so incidents of bullying that result in a uh, change in setting, a uh, change to an alter alternate setting of a student for at least half of the school day, those get reported in both bullying reporting system and in the behavior report. Um, if an incident uh, is not bullying, it gets reported in um, the Synergy system under discipline. And you, uh, those would be alcohol related, um, drug use, anything like that. Um, and if an incident does not re result in a suspension, um, but is an incident of bullying or cyberbullying, that would only be reported in bullying. That flowchart is very helpful. Highly recommend pulling that um, and keeping it accessible. Yeah, um, I'm just going to chime in too, just a little tidbit. Um, so yeah, it, it can be the removal of the setting. That's as, um, if the if the student misses their instructional time during the school day as a result. So you know if, if they 
do something and they're going to go sit in the principal's office for at least half of the remaining school day, then that is when you would want to report it. But um, for instance, if you give them just after school detention, they're not missing any class time because of that. So if the incident didn't involve violence, drugs, alcohol, marijuana, that list, um, then and it's just a detention, um, then yeah, that doesn't need to get reported as a behavior incident. So we've got a lot of questions around that. Um, and yeah, just wanted to throw in some bits and yeah, if you guys have any questions, shoot them out there. Not seeing any questions, so I'm going to continue to move on. Uh, let's go to daily attendance reporting. So, once again, daily attendance is entered into your student seat uh, synergy uh, through your local student information system from either a manual entry of student data um, in the student module, or you can do an upload of attendance uh, to the state reporting st status module. Uh, but data that is in NEO is reflected of what, reflective of what is in State Synergy. So if you have any missing data, you need to go back to State Synergy to make sure that everything is there. Um, otherwise, it is not going to be on your reports in NEO. Okay. You will need access to student data in NEO in order to access the daily attendance certification report. Um, access is granted to anyone who has um, an active staff assignment and has a NEO access request form submitted by the superintendent on your behalf. Uh, so please make sure that if you do not have access to student data that you are uh, going through your superintendent to get a access request submitted to the help desk. In NEO, we will go to student data, student reports, and then daily attendance certification report. Here's what that looks like. Um, oh, I guess we're not going to start at the beginning. Um, so in student data, on we have four reports of student uh, daily attendance. So we have a certification report. That's your aggregate counts of all of your attendance overall. Student uh, daily attendance details report. That's going to go into your details about the uh, number of days for each student. Uh, you can look up stu specific students in the student lookup for daily attendance and then the summary report also is going to give you some details as well. In the certification report, this is what it will look like. You will have the total days enrolled, total days present, total days absent, um, any total number of the total number of students that you have included in this report, and then any chronically absent students that are re being reported. So you will want your days of total enrollment to be about, not exactly, but about your number of students times your number of school days, uh, because that um, is going to be reflective of the total number of days that the students have been enrolled in your school. Um, so just kind of keep an eye on that number, make sure it makes sense um, with the number of students that you have and the number of days of school that you have had. But you can link into your su um, summary report here. Uh, to get into the details about what is making up these counts. You will see the individual students on the summary report uh, so that you can see if anyone is missing any attendance overall. So if those numbers aren't lining up, you can go in and you can use the summary report to identify any students that uh, maybe have low attendance or high attendance. Um, and so cert once everything is all set, the certify and submit to DOE button is here at the bottom. And that will be for your superintendent to certify and submit. If there are any incomplete records on this column, uh, this report will not be able to be certified. Uh, that is not true for quarters one, two, and three, but it is true for the end of year report. So any incomplete attendance records will prevent this button from being available for your superintendent. Uh, in order to identify the students that have incomplete attendance linking into that summary report is going to be the best way to do that, uh, to identify students that have no attendance entered. Um, so that's where we'll go next. And we're going to link into our summary report. This is what your summary will, report will look like. You'll have every student uh, and the number of days that they've been in school. You can see here that we do have um, an incomplete record here. And you can see that there is an incomplete column here as well. If you do have incomplete records, I highly recommend using your column sorting to select 
and sort these columns to see the Y's at the top um, and the no's at the bottom. So that way you can see your incomplete attendance records. So this student does not have any attendance entered. We'll need to enter attendance for this student before we can certify this report. Here you're really just looking at the number of students, the number of days that they've been enrolled, making sure that everything looks accurate. If a student has been enrolled all year long, you'll want to see the total number of school days that you've had represented in this enrollment. You can search for specific students. If you know someone that has um, maybe attendance issues, um, you can search for those specific students. You can export this to be reviewed by your um, attendance uh, person. Go ahead and do that. Um, and let's see, continuing on, sorry, muting someone. Column sorting once again. And just to clarify, the number of the total days enrolled is the number of unique attendance days entered into State Synergy. It is not based on the number of days of an enrollment in Synergy. So if a student has is enrolled for the month of October, they have 31 days of enrollment, but the number of days enrolled reflected in this report will be the number of school days that are entered for attendance. So it may be only 20, given that there were 20 days of school in October. So it won't count those weekends. Any questions about the summary report? This is where we get a lot of um, questions. Um, it's This is a really important place to review the number of days that each student is enrolled to make sure that everybody has been completely reported. Um, unexcused absences, excused absences, um, and present. And I'm sorry, I was helping somebody in the, in the chat with the, the audio. Um, did you, you cover the one day enrollments and things earlier? Or? I did not. Go ahead uh, if you okay. want to cover that. Yeah, because the other super common thing um, with this is um, if you have a student that, let's say, you know, you transferred them out at the beginning of the school year, they never attended. Um, maybe you had to do a placeholder enrollment to fix, you know, your dropout report or something. Um, so we built the attendance report to completely ignore any student that only has a one day enrollment. And that could mean that they're enrolled, for example, uh, September 1st uh, start date and then a September 1st exit date. Uh, or it could be September 1st start date and a September 2nd exit date. So as long as that enrollment only encompasses basically one school day, uh, we will ignore it for the purposes of this attendance report. So that way you guys can um, you know, fix dropouts, um, get a, a grad marked or something. Um, without it interfering. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at this, because if if you have a placeholder enrollment, um, you know, to send a kid back to homeschool, but that enrollment that you put in covers three days, um, then we're going to say, OK, well, this isn't just a single day anymore. So now we're going to ask you for attendance. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, you're your your transfer enrollment should only cover a single day and then we'll ignore them. Otherwise, we're going to ask you for it. Um, and that's just a matter of changing your dates and synergy. You guys can do that. Um, you you will have to do it manually. You're not going to be able to fix dates with an upload. Um, so you'll have to pull them up on the student screen, drill into the enrollment history, show detail, and then you can fix your dates in there. Uh, but that's another super, super common thing. I'm probably going to help a thousand people with that before June is out. So, <laughs> so that is, yeah, that's the summary report. Um, so just really dive into these um, numbers, make sure that everybody looks accurate. Um, there are some, let's go to the next slide actually. So I have a scenario for everyone. Um, if attendance is showing for the, uh, tw the for December 14th in Synergy and Neo, but December 14th was a snow day. How can attendance be deleted? Um, so I'm going to launch a poll in the chat here. So you can go ahead and answer this question here. Um, 
there, there is, you can select multiple answers if you think there is more than one possibility. Um, so in this scenario, an entire school has attendance for 1214 that needs to be wiped out because it was a snow day. So go ahead and select your answer. Okay, we're getting a couple different responses here. The close race between option one and option two for anyone who's watching the results. <laughs> So in this scenario, 1214 is a snow day. However, it is showing in Synergy and in Neo as being a day of attendance that students have been at school or they have um, absences, whatever it may be there. In this case, the mass delete attendance tool would be the best option for removing the attendance. Simply removing the attendance from the upload will not remove the date of attendance in your Synergy. That day will still be there if you upload without that date. So please don't use the upload. It's not going to work. Those dates will still be there. Um, in order to mass delete the, the attendance day, you will need to use the mass delete attendance tool. Because there's already a day of attendance on 1214 entered into Synergy, the upload is not going to remove that day simply because that day does not exist in the upload. So please make sure that you're using that mass delete tool. Um, and uh, so attendance can be deleted by you just using that tool. The resources for that tool are on the Synergy uh, instructions page of the Help Desk website um, under Synergy Manual Entry, Mass Delete Attendance Tool. Um, go ahead and use that uh, resource. It's very helpful um, if you've never used it. Please be careful with the tool that you do not delete all of your attendance uh, because your uploads will get much slower. You will have a lot, you'll have to take a lot more time to upload all of your attendance for the whole year over again. So just please make sure that you're putting in the correct range of dates. Uh, in this case, it would be 1214 for the whole school. Um, so that tool will be helpful. Any questions about mass delete? Right. The last report we have today, truancy report. Once again, this is a report that is uploaded into State Synergy, and then we'll be going into NEO. If any report information is incorrect on the NEO report, you will need to go back to State Synergy in order to get it updated. This report is located in the student data section of NEO um, under student reports and truancy certification report. Once again, you will need access to the student data section in order to view this report and your superintendent will need access to certify the report. If you do not have access, you will need to have a NEO access request form submitted on your behalf and you have to have a active staff assignment in NEO staff. All right, so on to the bottom of this page, we have truancy certification report um, and the truancy details report. That certification report will be your aggregate counts and the details report will be your uh, specific students that are making up those aggregate counts. This is what your report will look like. Uh, you have the potentially truant column here that is based off of daily attendance that has been reported that according to the logic in NEO is telling us that that student may be truant. 
Uh, however, it is a student that you will need to review in order to identify if the student was truant or not. Um, so at the bottom of this report, that is where your superintendent will review and submit to the Department of Education. Um, and you can click uh, link into the details report from here so you can see who that potentially truant student is and all those other incidences of absences um, and those other students who are truant. This is what the report will look like on the details side. You're, if you're looking for your potentially truant students, they will be the ones that are please verify attendance data and add a truancy record if necessary. And that's the truancy report. You can search, export, column sort, and that's what you got. That is the end of the presentation today. Those are all of the reports. Uh, we will hang on for just a moment so that if there are any questions, you are welcome to ask them now. You can raise your hand uh, using the raise hand feature up at the top, or you can put a post in the chat. All right, Jay Mishu, what is your question? The question I have um, is related to the truancy. We have a 60-40 school. Um, that takes care of our high school students. So um, we also have students at the high school level um, attending a special purpose private school. And so in the past, we've run into problems where that student is potentially truant. Our high school being the primary needs to handle it, but every time they try to put in attendance, it conflicts with the special purpose private school. What is the procedure we should be doing to get those corrected and the entry in? So the school that is that should be putting in the attendance for that student should be the school where the student is attending for 50% or more of the academic day. So if the student is attending the special purpose private school the whole day, that attendance should be reported by the special purpose private school. And so the truancy entry, is that being made by the high school or the special purpose private school? That would be by, Mike, you might need to help me with this one. Um, I believe that would be the high school um, because they, well, no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause with um with your outplacements um and, and with the 60% schools too, um, you guys are still the responsible district for the student. So you know you're paying to send the student there. So they're for the purposes of truancy, they're kind of like under your purview for responsibility. So um while the attendance will be taken by wherever they actually go. Um, hopefully they're communicating with you guys. And that's also the why we're going to show um, on your truancy report, these potentially truant kids, so you can kind of get them on your radar and then start following up. But yeah, um, I believe we have it open. So either school can put in the truancy currently. Um, so it's kind of up to you and how you guys is relationship uh, is going. If you would prefer to put the truancies in and manage them on your end, I think that makes the most sense because you know, you as the responsible district, you're the one that's going to be reaching out to the parents, trying to coordinate with um, your SRO, um, things like that. So I think from a practical standpoint, it makes sense to have um, the primary school do the truancy and synergy and follow up the steps. Because, you know, like, you know, the, the special purpose school, they, you know, hopefully they're calling the parents, you know, like, hey, you know, where's where's Johnny today? But, um, you know, you guys will probably be taking more point on that than they will. So, um yeah, does that mean, hopefully that makes sense, Janet. So we can put it, I guess uh, the clarify, the only clarification I would need at this point is we can enter the truancy record without having any kind of attendance being maintained at the 6040 school. And it won't. Yeah, okay. yeah ex exactly. It's because um, it's tied to the the attendance and with truancy it's tied to the responsible district um so yeah we we kind of figured figured that piece out for you guys so yeah you can yeah that's totally fine okay so the 
the attendance from the secondary school, the special purpose private school is being seen by the DOE. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So and that's we, why you'll, we you'll okay. Yeah. So you, you'll see all those kids on your attendance reports, on your truancy reports. Um, yeah. Okay. That, um, that clarifies it because we always seem to run into a problem in um, with yeah. the attendance piece. And so if all we have to do is only the, the entry um, for the truancy, that makes sense. Right. Yep. Because, um, okay. yeah, because essentially what it is, is when, when we put together the truancy data at the end of the year for the legislature, um, we're reporting it by the responsible SAUs. So like the, like, you know, um, Spring Harbor or Spurlink or um, Bangor Regional Program, like those places, they're not, they don't get truancy data reported. It would be whatever the, you know, the public SAU where the student lives. That's kind of who the data is getting tied back to. So um, we take all of that into account. So, yeah. That makes sense. Yes, it does. Thank you. Good question. Good question. Any other questions? Hi there. This is Dawn. For some reason, I'm not able to access the chat option, and um, my coworker and I did have a question. Okay. Um, could you remind us of what the due dates were that you listed in the beginning are again? Sure. Yeah, I'll go right back to them for you. Actually, you know what? It's going to be a lot easier and a lot less dizzying if I go this way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Any last minute questions? Always feel free to reach out to the help desk if you ever have anything come up that um, you need clarification on. Um, we're happy to help. Um, Thank you. No problem. All right, so we'll go back to if, oh, Paul, go ahead. You're muted if you're yeah, trying to yeah. chat. There you go. <laughs> okay. Hey, Allie. Hey, Paul. How are you doing? Oh, you know, not too bad. <laughs> um, I noticed that.